prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves, the paramedics say. Our son's head lolls, arms and legs in spasm. Agitated, unresponsive, they say, carrying him out to the ambulance. We cannot ride with him because of SARS, because of rules, because there is no room. We stand on the sidewalk, hands flutter useless while they hook him to machines. The door slams shut, siren brings the neighbors running. The ER doctor says it after the spinal tap, the CAT scan, meningitis, some patients don't make it, brain damage. Thick black straps bind our son's wrists and ankles to the gurney, cinch his waist, but still he flails. Monitors ping, the intern says, prepare yourselves. And the ICU nurses with their soft shoes and softer whispers say it too. Tubes in his arms and nose, snake under the sheet, clamps on his forefinger, forehead, taped to his chest. Sometimes for almost a whole hour he lies still before he jerks and tosses once again. Sometimes his eyes open, roll back, white, stained red. We take turns holding his cold fists, cradle his head in our hands. Love, 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 we say to him, and we are here, we will not let you go. A nurse says, unconscious, he can't hear you. We brush his burning forehead with our lips. We kiss his fingers, his flushed cheeks. Come back to us, come back. The numbing of hospital rooms like the one down the hall where he was born nearly 18 years ago, where we labored for hours just like these, oblivious to noon and night and morning, time measured by the changing of nurses' shifts. Our focus on breath, the need to make what we believe ha will happen, happen. Faith past understanding that he will be delivered to us whole, ten fingers, ten toes. <laughs>